Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Komoto Libetlapi. I'm the uh, program director for this webinar. Um, I just want to just, um, you know, welcome everybody. I'm going to uh, just introduce you to, to the uh, our presenters for today. And I'm also going to also, you know, give an opportunity to um, Dr. Matibe to also, you know, uh, welcome everybody. Um, but before we even start there, colleagues, I hope we're all sorted out. And um, I'm just going to sort of take you through, first of all, you know, what is the purpose of, of uh, today's webinar? Um, basically, you know, the, the webinar is, you know, was designed uh, by you know, the medical devices uh, uh, department or, or unit and, you know, to basically provide some clarification on the responsibilities of SAPRA and SANAS with regards to conformity assessment bodies that are operating in South Africa. And so that we can also have a, you know, a platform to have a discussion on how the renewal process is going to you know, um, happen or take place and what is then the expectations from SAPRA and then as well, what is the expectations from the industry. Um, so how the program will, um, uh, go ahead for today um, is that from half past nine, oh, we we're supposed to have our CRO. Unfortunately, she had other engagements uh, to attend to. She was going to give us a, a warm welcome, but I'm going to ask Dr. Matibe to do that on her behalf. And then after that, then we'll start with our um, presenters that I'm also going to uh, once uh, uh, um, um, Dr. Matibi has, 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 has given us a welcome. I'm going to ask our presenters to also just, you know, share their, you know, videos, and then we can also, you know, they can also introduce themselves before they start with the presentation. Um, and, and then in terms of the rules of engagements, how the house is going to run for today, um, as the presenters are busy giving presentation, I'll just request that if you do have any questions whatsoever, please send them on the chat. And then, um, you know, then Dr. Matibe or someone from the team will also be able to, you know, respond. And if we don't respond at that time, we have a session right at the end, or after, after all the presentations where we will have a question and answer, you know, session where all the mics will be open, then we can be able to engage and, you know, you know, have whatever questions that you would like to ask, and then also answers will also be provided for you. And um, yeah, and then yeah, I think we'll, we will take it in that in that format. So I'm just going to ask Dr. Matibe just to give us a warm welcome. Dr. Matibe, over to you, ma'am. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Komotsu, uh, for the uh, introduction and also explaining the proceedings of our of the workshop, as well as the explaining the intention of the workshop. So I just want to give a warm welcome to everyone. Um, I know tomorrow it's a holiday, and thank you very much for for your attendance. Uh, and we welcome everyone on this call, and we hope that this. Uh, session will be able to assist in clarifying some of the queries that we have received and that we are also clear in explaining the requirements from the regulator perspective. So I'd just like to welcome everyone and um, we'll, as indicated by Komoto, we'll try and answer as much uh, questions and clarity seek, um, clarify some of the issues that the industry might have. So the focus of this, as indicated, it's mainly on the renewals and also talking to conformity assessment bodies. So uh, welcome and thank you very much for, for attending the, the workshop. Thanks, Komoto. I will hand over to you so you can introduce our speakers and then we can start with the proceedings. Thank um, you very much, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, no, I just wanted to indicate that I think the industry is aware that there's two documents that we are going to talk to are already published on our website. So. I hope they had an opportunity to have a look at them so that, you know, when we, we have the base of understanding on what we are all discussing today. Thank you. I'll hand over back to you, Kumitsu. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, please do note yeah, that as Dr. Matibes indicated that the 
two documents have been published and uh, they're on our website. So maybe if you haven't had time while you are, we're in the you know webinar today or workshop, you know you can quickly just you know peep through our uh, website and then just check and see maybe if you might still have questions or you need certain clarity. Um, I'm going to just ask our presenters just to also you know um, uh, introduce themselves in the following order. Um, Dumelo uh, Ledimo, so can you please kindly introduce yourself, sir? Good morning, colleagues. My name is Dumelo. I'm from South African National Accreditation System. I'll be making a presentation uh, outlining the responsibilities of SANAS within the regulatory uh, domain or framework that has been put forward by the South African Health Product Regulatory Authority. I'm responsible for the new program development at SANAS, which uh, the medical device was one of those. Uh, I'm looking forward to have a fruitful engagement with you this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dumelo. Um, Lydia? Just a quick uh, introduction, ma'am. Okay. Uh, morning everyone uh, thank you for your presence today um, i'm lydia mutwohela uh, the medical device manager registration in particular i'll be uh, presenting on renewal license renewal for establishments medical device establishments thank you thank you very much uh, can you see is also one of ours Presenters, can you see them? May you please just introduce yourself, ma'am? Um, good morning, everyone. I am Kanyisi Gengoku. I'm Medical Device Technical Officer um, at SAPRA, and I will be presenting on SAPRA's role responsibility in terms of um, conformity assessment bodies update. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all our presenters. I'm now going to give uh, Dumelo an opportunity now to present um, to, or to give his presentation rather on conformity assessment bodies, uh, the update so far. Uh, Dumelo, over to you, sir. Thank you, colleagues. Good morning, good morning, colleagues. As, as I indicated, I'll speak to the quality infrastructure and the support that we'll be providing to SAPRA and the roles and responsibility of SANAS within the regulatory regime of the medical device and IVDs. Uh, in South Africa, we have the quality infrastructure system that allows an economy to set the norms and standards and then test against those particular standards. In this case, the ISO 13485 and any other applicable requirements that will be uh, norms and standards that will be applicable to different medical devices, having done the risk assessment for that particular medical device. In South Africa, we refer to the, uh, the, the, the quality infrastructure as a technical infrastructure, and the whole purpose of that is to assist with the globalization and movement of goods, in, in this case, to allow the medical device to come in the country and our manufacturing industry to be able to meet the norms and standards of the importing countries from what we will be producing here. The, the technical infrastructure of South Africa is made up of four entities, or four pillars that support the conformity assessment body. Uh, perhaps for the benefit of uh, those who will not be familiar with the conformity assessment board. When you talk of conformity assessment board, you are not only talking about the certification, we're talking about the bodies that conduct the inspection. In this one, it will speak to those that are in the X-ray where we're having inspection bodies. We speak about those that will conduct the testing on the material or devices that has been developed and so forth. And ultimately, there needs to be a calibration uh, of the instrument and measurement that are actually conducted within that space. So this for uh, technical infrastructures which mirrors uh, similar structures to different economies in the world in order to facilitate uh, the world trade uh, is that in South Africa we have the South African National Accreditation System, we have the National Metrology Institute, 
we have the South African Bureau of Standard. South African Bureau of Standard, it is divided in two main major uh, parts within the conformity assessment, which is the standard development, the paper standard, like the ISO 13485, the risk assessment that will be there, and all any other IEC or ISO standard that will be required for design and development of the medical devices. And on the fourth arm, we have what we call the National Regulator for Compulsory Specification. The National Regulator for Compulsory Specification within the context of the trade and industry and, com and competition is that they will be designated to control particular uh, what we call commodities and, and product with the number of uh, regulations which they call compulsory specification to ensure that safety, health and environment is protected. And now when we bring it home for medical devices, this, this arm of the regulator, it will be SAPRA because the standard will still source them from the South African Bureau of Standard. The traceability of measurement and measurement standard, they will still be maintained and traced to them. Uh, Paris are called with regard to the traceability of measurement by National Metrology Institute of South Africa. With regard to uh, accreditation, it is SANAS, which we will deal with it later. And just to give a pictorial picture of how this quality infrastructure to support the conformity assessment uh, area is that the SAPRA will play the regulatory uh, role there, which will put forward the regulation in terms of how the conformity assessment, how the manufacturer, import and exporter need to conduct themselves with regard to ensuring the conformity assessment uh, activities and procedures are discharged accordingly in order to ensure uh, performance and safety of that and using those particular uh, entities. In the May, is that the South African National Accreditation provide an internationally recognized accreditation infrastructure for the formal recognition of the technical competency of conformity assessment services that uh, laboratories, as I indicated earlier, in the broader terms of what is a conformity assessment body, it is broader to that terms. And then national compulsory specification, as I've said, provide a legal framework to ensure that there's a public safety and health for an environmental protection within the Republic and ensure that there is a trade fair in terms of the Legal Metrology Act. Equally so, as I indicated, the, and the MISA is primarily responsible for scientific and industrial metrology. It offers measurement capability and traceability of measurement to South African national measurement standard and unit standard to provide confidence of accuracy of such results and the, the South African Bureau of Standard as such that provide uh, the infrastructure. And and all those four entities, I'm sorry if I'm I'm rushing, I've got quite a lot of slide and there's area where we need to spend more time, that's where I will be much slower. And this one is just giving context in terms of our infrastructure and frame and how it works and what makes it to, to, to be. And then we have all this uh, uh, legislation that put all those four entities to ensure what I have I spoke about, uh, quality infrastructure for protection of environment, health, and a trade and ensuring that it is a fair trade is that the accreditation act measurement unit and measurement standard act national regulator for compulsory specification act the standard act the legal metrology the national building regulation and building standard act administered by the national regulator for compulsory specification and over and above that there are other additional regulation and standard that will be made reference to a number of uh, what we call technical regulations that will need to be enforced using this quality infrastructure as such. So that's how in the main this particular system of quality infrastructure and technical infrastructure in our context uh, uh, and operate. I think it suffice to at least give a picture, even though our act is in 2006, that South African National Accreditation System has been in existence since 1974. At the time, it was only responsible for calibration laboratories. And in, from 1992 to 1996, it expanded the scope to include calibration and testing. And from 1996 to 2006, it operated, that's when the, 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 the name South African National Accreditation System came to be, and the scope was then expanded. And during this particular development, we've been one of the founding member of the a mutual recognition and multilateral arrangement that are concluded under the International Laboratory Accreditation Corporation and International Accreditation uh, uh, Framework. And from 1996, that's when the legislation came and gave powers 
we uh, to, to sign us in that and over and above that within the African continent, we play a major role in developing the mutual recognition arrangement through the AFRIC. We chair that and we're hosting the secretariat function within the South African National Accreditation System to make sure that Africa also develop and have a structure that is equally so with the developed countries in order to allow a facilitation of trade and movement of goods within different countries. And since then, nine, since 19, uh, since 2006, sorry for that, in 2006, having that particular scope, at that time, SANAS had 343 conformity assessment body that we accredited. Remember that at the time when the registration came, some of the accreditation or some of the accreditation, they were conducted by South African Bureau of Standards. So now with the separation of roles and responsibility for different entities was outlined and make sure that there's no overlap, that you don't become a player and a referee within within the space, that there is an independent of roles as such. And we have grown then since from 343 in 2006 to now 1,916 facilities. As you can see, most are in medical, the medical to the medical labs. Uh, in, in the broader scheme of its as, as such. And then we, we will see that for our purposes here, for those that have X-rays in the inspection area to be 270, to build of all inspection function that need to be conducted for conformity assessment. And then we come to our case in the certification of 13485, we have 921. This 921, we have a big and small uh, conformity assessment body within the broad a sense of management system, personnel system, and greenhouse gases validation and verification. So it is 91. You will see it's very small because most of what you see in here is about the plan that you have SABS providing multiple management system certification or Bureau of Veritas or, or, or uh, uh, those that will uh, accredit having uh, uh, applied for accreditation within 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 South Africa. But to answer the question of the medical device at this point, time as I have checked, is that for medical device we have one, and we will we will discuss that in terms of what what is the reason uh, which is not unique to the medical device in terms of the adoption and movement at that. Uh, in simplicity, I referred it to what is called as a student syndrome you get a, a, a due date of assignment in May, uh, in, in, in February. One will not do anything until May comes and then cries about that there's not enough time for them to prepare. Uh, when we're dealing with the South African national accreditation that we we recognize we are recognized as a sole national accreditation body responsible for carrying out accreditation in respect of conformity assessment, which include uh, calibration, testing, verification laboratory, medical laboratory and certification, validation, inspection and BE and monitoring of good laboratory practice compliance in line with OECD Organization for Economic Development and, and Cooperation then as per the act that established us. And when we talk of the technical competency within the conformity assessment, you're talking about this element. We're talking that they need to be a technical competent staff at the conformity assessment body. They need to have methods that have been validated and appropriate to achieve the intended purposes. And the measurements that are involved within that particular space, they must be traceable to the national standards. That's where now the National Metrology Institute of South Africa comes into be that those measurements are traced to the national uh, the unit standard and those measurements are traced to the international measurement standard so that there is an equivalence and traceability of that measurement to the central measurement that is maintained at global. And they need to be a suitable calibration and maintenance of the equipment to make sure that they continue and they, they continue to be suitable to achieve and deliver what is expected. And all of this need to be conducted within a suitable environment because the environment have an impact in terms of what needs to be done. And handling and inspection of the item uh, is very important because it can deteriorate within the storage or how they've been handled and then you, you get invalid results. And all of those elements, they require a quality management or quality assurance processes to support and make sure that there's consistent efficiency and continuous achievement of the intended purposes. And this structure, which makes SANAS to be acceptable, is that we are, we are compliant to the international criteria requirement laid down in the International Accreditation Forum, and that are also laid in the International Laboratory Accreditation Corporation and ISO 17021 and SANAS have a formal documented complaint procedures to deal with matters if there's a concern 
and issues. And what we do, it is constant with what is being done internationally and in benchmarking. So equally so, when we're running any program that is not yet within the mutual recognition or multilateral arrangement, is that when we have a peer evaluation every four years, those particular programs in line with ISO 1702, and they also need to be reviewed and assessed in order to say that what we're doing it is equivalent and accepted within the mutual recognition arrangement and multilateral arrangement. And this global system that I've been talking about in terms of the ILEC International Laboratory Accreditation Corporation, this is how it works. We have the global one, which is the IAF and ILEC, and in the multiple region, we'll have the region that will run uh, the monitoring and peer evaluation of this accreditation bodies and compare what they do there with other bodies and all of them in terms of the uh, a hierarchy of the pyramid is that in, in the base we'll have the regional one that all fits to the international accreditation body that will sit every year to, to map out the peer evaluation and monitoring to see the robustness and consistency of this mutual recognition and arrangement. And within the structure of the one that we're talking about, ISO 13485 in the medical device, we normally say there are level fives within the multilateral arrangement under the IAF, where we have level one and level two which is sitting at the accreditation level that first of all that SANAS needs to implement the ISO 17011 and the mandatory document applicable to that and then we apply to be recognized on level two and level three where we're dealing with the product certification ISO 17065 and the management system uh, there's a new one information uh, innovation management system that has been launched recent I think yes uh, this week uh, all in all, in case when you're talking about the management system, there are about 26 uh, management system that can be think. But what we have I've highlighted here is those the key one that are known: the food food safety management system 22,000, and the quality management system, uh, environmental management system, and of course the what we that brought us together here: the medical device and IVT and such, and uh, the other what we call the subscope in terms of the uh, verification and validation of greenhouse personnel uh, certification. It, it suffice because this will, will build to the context of uh, the conformity assessment body or the organization that implement this to say, why are we not just on the face value uh, uh, take the certification that comes from any other country without any administrative or processes that we need to consider in the country is that in the main there are two types of the of the mutual recognition arrangement and of course even under the voluntary they are about under the WTO World Trade Organization indicative list of the mutual recognition they are about other aid system that is in the voluntary space but in the broader terms is that we can refer to the voluntary and the statutory one in the uh, a government to government one, it is where the Department of Trade and Industry will conclude the bilateral with any other countries. In this context, I just highlighted the, the bigger one, African Continental Free Trade and the TFTA, Tripartite Free Trade Area and EPA Economic Partnership Agreement with the European Union and then the BRICS. And then within those Government to government will conclude in terms of how they recognize each other and how movement of goods will be done. There's a number of negotiation and in terms of the approval of that, which is robust in terms of the economic uh, negotiations and so forth for, for conclusion of that. That is on government to government and you say, and, and that when it operates, it might not need to recognize the IAF and ILEC. It is between the government to government or parties that are negotiating in terms of how the movement of good, the acceptance of certificate and so forth will be recognized as such. And it is incumbent on the government to make sure that it, it works. So in that you will find that the International Relation and Cooperation Department will also deal as part of that, uh, I didn't include the SADC one and all those. And so those are those multiple government to government negotiations or agreement that conclude MOU that can be between bilateral or multilateral, depending on the structure of uh, the MRA that is included. And then we have what you called the voluntary. Uh, 
the IF and ILEC assistant is a, it's, it's in, the, in the voluntary space, you know, but it assists and it can only support, it can also support or it does support depending on the structure and legislative framework of a country in how it incorporates that particular requirement. For example, in the European Union, they do not take the IAF and ILEC at the face value and then they accept it. Uh, there is a guide and a legislation which includes a lot of English in terms of how they deal with this. And perhaps I will touch base on it when we dwell into much based on the World Health Organization fra uh, recommendation framework. But in the main voluntary recognition of mutual recognition agreement is regulated in a, excuse me, in a regulatory space. It is done through legislative provision for sector to sector and for commodity to commodity, meaning that having the voluntary, it does not cover everything. It need to be specific to the sector and specific to the product that we deal with. It is very important to understand this because it's going to deal with a number of concern and questions that we've been receiving from Subbrand for Sanas in terms of how these things get managed. So with, with regard to the conformity assessment in the main, we have what you call, I apologize, the, the, the picture seemed not to be uh, a good quality then. But in the main is that uh, the conformity assessment, uh, there's this idea of functional approach. The functional approach talks to four main issues where you're talking about the selection, determination, surveillance, and, and reviewing. And then when we deal with the selection, in the selection, we're talking about the identification of product, process, and service management system personnel organization that must demonstrate its fulfillment of the specified requirements. Meaning here, the medical device, the organization management system, the process that involved there, how do they fulfill the specified requirement? The specified requirement can be uh, taken from the technical regulation or the regulation and the standard applicable for that particular product that uh, object of conformity, object of conformity in our context being a medical device and IVD, uh, that the conformation to, to what extent that uh, need to fulfill that. And the second part is in determination. Determination is now where the conformity assessment activities take place, where we evaluate, uh, where we there is an evaluation of the specified characteristics, uh, being in quality, safety, performance, and efficacy of object of uh, assessment. Medical object of assessment, back of your head, uh, can be remain the medical device and examination of the specification, drawing, and so forth. That's a determination in order for us to determine that particular device uh, meets the stated regulation and requirement. And lastly, that what has been acquired through the determination must be reviewed and an attestation must be given. This is where we we'll issue a statement of conformity that yes, based on, this, on, the, on the selection and based on the determination conducted on this, we then review those results and then add and give that yes, this particular object of conformity, a medical device comply with the stated requirement. The last element become the responsibility of the regulator where now the product is in the market and the product need to continue to comply and there need to be a market surveillance that will be determined on how in the marketplace those products that have been placed there, how do they fulfill those particular requirements? Uh, am I still good on time? Uh, I can slow down now. Um, yeah, you've got okay, about five, five minutes left, Jumelo. Thank you. Yeah, this time running fast. How many slides do you still have? Yeah, no, I'll rush through, don't worry. Uh, the technical uh, regulation system, it, it is made out of these five elements. There's a, tech, a regulatory authority, which is a SAPRA, and then there's a suite of technical regulation, which we published by SAPRA, and making also further uh, reference to the particular standard. And then, of course, there's a role of the supplier of the product, manufacturer, importer, distributor, which they need to fulfill particular responsibility. And then the conformity assessment infrastructure, which is conformity assessment uh, accreditation, and lastly, they need to be sanctioned if you do not comply. How, what are the penalties and remedies in place? And regulatory framework in a broader terms is that the, the issues of quality management system, because uh, we must uh, appreciate and be alive to the fact that at the moment, just complying to the quality management system is just a one element that need to be addressed. There's still other elements that will be developed moving forward to conclude this value system of the framework with regard to that. But at the moment, we're emphasizing the issue of pre-market that importer manufacturing but they must have a quality management system according to 13485. They must be registering uh, their uh, medical devices as the officer will then be presented and so forth. And they need to obtain that technical dossier and so forth and, and then around that particular process as such. 
and uh, in, in their brief to allow this movement of good because we are alive to the fact that most of the medical devices are not manufactured in the country, but at the same time, we need to have an access to that in order to support health and safety of the public and make sure that uh, uh, the, the, the health system have an access to this technology in assisting the life. And then the World Health Organization through the uh, organization Global Modeling uh, Pro pose or give recommendation to two approaches, the reliance approach and recognition approach, which comes with their own challenges uh, from country to country, depending on the legislative framework that support or protect them. And we, 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 we recognize that to the level that is in the interest of South Africa. And now dealing with the responsibility of SAPRA and, 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 and SANAS is that uh, SANA regulator will be responsible to grant CAB to work in the country, meaning that if you are a conformity assessment that is not in South Africa uh, coming to operate, you know, it will be difficult for a regulator to provide an oversight to you when you are sitting elsewhere because a regulator needs to have an access to those conformity assessment and make sure that then it will advise SANAS in the relevant regulation, it will deal with the compliant and contravention of the regulatory requirements as per the sanctions that are provided for within the regulation and notify SANAS. And the role of SANAS would be accredited in a conformity assessment body based on their technical competency and participate in the regulatory workshop similar to this one and deal with the accreditation related transgression and notify the regulator of any changes that conformity assessment body accreditation status and then maintain the database of such. And the approval process as we envisage it is that the regulator will grant approval based on the conformity assessment body success application of obtaining accreditation to SANAS or the proposed uh, to apply uh, based on the standard that we have in place there. And within, within that particular system, we do have a complaint and appeal system. All the investigation and dispute that will arise or from contravention of regulation will be the responsibility of the regulator. And all investigation and dispute arising from contravention of the accreditation requirement will be the responsibility of SANAS in accordance with the P12 handling of home complaints. And where in, uh, investigation and dispute overlapped in terms of function, regulator and SANAS both parties will cooperate and resolve that matter uh, based on the MOU that will that you, that we uh, that is under revision at this point in time and I, I want to pass this one in the interest of time and when you're talking about the conformity assessment well the regulatory authority retain the full responsibility placed upon them by the law the regulatory authority will designate the CAB what we envisage is that once we if you are a, a conformity assessment body that is in South Africa being accredited by South African national accreditation system you will go to the um South African Health Product Regulator with that, and then we will then be designated uh, designated to conduct conformity assessment on behalf of the SAPRA for quality management system as that. And if you are a foreign uh, conformity assessment bodies, you will go, still go to SANA, SANA will verify you and recognize that in order for us to support and continue with our mutual recognition and multilateral arrangement that is concluded under the International Accreditation Forum. And accreditation, it is used to monitor and as a, as a monitoring and control mechanism in this case. And although uh, the CAB may perform some evaluation function, the final decision and enforcement power remains at all time with the regulator because ultimately it is a regulator that is responsible for this sector. And uh, for, for manufacturers, uh, conformity by manufacturers, the quality, quality, safety, and performance of the medical devices are determined systematic uh, are determined by the systematic control applied by the manufacturer to its design development testing and manufacture and distribution over the medical device life cycle and the manufacturer will implement the systematic control through the quality management system IAF a mandatory document reiterated that the maintenance and evaluation of the legal compliance is the responsibility of the medical device I want to repeat that the International Accreditation for a Mandatory Document reiterated that the maintenance and evaluation of the legal compliance, it is the responsibility of the medical device manufacturer. So this means that you having been certi certified to ISO 13485, you do not uh, abdicate your responsibility in maintaining and evaluating the legal compliance at that. It remains at all time the responsibility of the medical device and manufacturer. The CAB, it is responsible for verifying that the manufacturer has evaluated the statutory and regulatory, com uh, regulatory compliance and that appropriate action has been taken 
for the non-compliance. So those are very key important that at all time we, we need to be alive to. And then SAPRA uh, current regulations since have been implementing uh, that requirement. And in that structure on the IAF monetary document is that there are this, because as I said, there are about, I think now just a guess made that there are about 28 management system and ISO 17021, it is drafted or written in a generic manner to cover all management system. And then each and every management system will have specific issues. And to deal with the specific issues, then IAF uh, found it appropriate to then develop an additional requirement which state as a mandatory document for both an accreditation body and conformity assessment body and for us to operate this medical from the accreditation perspective is that when we have a peer evaluation we will also open above ISO 17021 need to show cause on how we fulfill the IAF mandatory document 8 that give additional uh, requirement over and above that 79. Equally so on the conformity assessment body, there's an MD9 uh, that gives additional requirements specific to the medical device that need to be fulfilled and need to be evaluated as such. And those those will be the annexures and scope on that. And thank you. Uh, I'm sorry for rushing, but you will have my detail if there's any question that we won't be able to address today in here. I'm always available on on my email that will be shared as such. Thank you very much, Program Director. And and colleagues. Thank you so much, Dumelo, uh, uh, for a really wonderful uh, you know, presentation and as well for unpicking all these functions and responsibilities um, and uh, roles um, that um, are, are done by SANAS and as well, you know, as well reiterating as well the responsibilities of SAPRA in, and even the, um, you know, the, you know, the responsibilities of, of the manufacturers themselves. So really thank you very much. And um, the colleagues have also asked if now they can have access to your, um, to your presentation. Will you be able to share that with us? Uh, both Dumelo and Komuta on mute. Okay, I think Dumelo. Oh, sorry, sorry. You are muted, uh, yes, yeah. I'm muted. Um, no, yes, I said I will send through the presentation. You send them through. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for a wonderful presentation. Okay, I'm just going to um, ask uh, Kanyisi Lenau to to prepare her presentation. Thanks, Dumelo. Um, Kanyisi Le. Can you please uh, avail yourself, ma'am? You've got until uh, 10.26 for your presentation. May you go ahead. Thank you, Program Director. Okay, is my presentation visible? Yes, ma'am, we can see it. Thank you. My presentation will, will be shorter than Tumelo's, <laughs> and this is an update from um, SAPRA's view in terms of conformity assessment bodies, and it's um, an extension to the documents that have already been published on our website. I'll first give a brief um, responsibility of SAPRA and who SAPRA is. SAPRA's main date is outlined in the Medicines and Related Substance Act, which is Act 101 of 1965, as amended, and also includes the Hazardous Substance Act um, 15 of 1973, and it is both in accordance with Section 2B of the Medicines and Related Substance Act in relation to the functions of the authority. And the responsibility is to ensure compliance with existing legislation. Every organization which holds a medical device establishment license is required to have a formal quality management system in place. When um, SAPRA started licensing establishments, we did give a, a grace period for establishments where they were not required to have an ISO certificate in place when they were submitting. The responsibility is the ISO responsibility is that the medical device regulations have been um, revised and they were published for comment in August of 2021, where it's currently being reviewed. They have not yet been implemented, but the revised medical device regulations have identified that the certification to the quality standard will be the ISO 13485 for medical devices. And this is in terms of requirements for regulatory purposes 
which will be required for the new medical device establishment, for renewal of a medical device establishment, and also for an amendment to a medical device establishment and also any associated records. This is also, we need to ensure that it is certified by an independent conformity assessment body, which has been in turn accredited by SANAS, recognized by SAPRA as being compliant to the South African legislation and regulations for the medical devices as published by SAPRA. The role of SAPRA will be ensuring that in terms of effective, efficient and um, ethical standards, that we ensure assessment in terms of safety, quality and performance of medical devices. This also um, relates to now in terms of the, the establishment, we have three, which is the distributor, manufacturer and wholesaler to ensure that they are also in compliance with the ISO standard in terms of their quality management system and that they are compliant in terms of all the regulatory requirements as deemed by SAPRA. The ISO requirements extension aligned to establishment license renewal. This was published um, in one of our documents beginning of the year where the criteria for an applicant to renew their establishment license over a period of five years was to have an ISO certificate. As I've stated before that when establishment um, applications first started in 2016, they were given a grace period of five years. However, majority about um, in the total of 669 applicants that were issued from April 2017 to December 2018, 239 licenses will be required to be renewed in 2020, starting from April. And currently in place, there's only one local conformity assessment body in the country, which has been approved by SAPRA. And also most applicants are dependent on international conformity assessment bodies to certify them against the ISO 13485. And um, with all this said, we have given an extension of three years, and there are documents that have been published on our website that have um, given more detail and context in terms of why we have given this um, extension. The first important document is MD32, which is the ISO 13485 Conformity Assessment Body Communication, which um, gives a guide on the functions of SAPRA on the requirements for conformity assessment bodies, on also the appeal process that will be done by any um, di disputes from uh, medical device establishment licensees, as well as conformity assessment body. We have also published um, a conformity assessment body requirements recognition SAPRA checklist. In this checklist, um, the, the conformity assessment body needs to indicate that the declaration of conformity for conformity assessment body has been um, provided. The declaration provides um, uh, a declaration that they will be that they will be in accordance to the regulations of South Africa as published by SAPRA. It's, um, it also goes on to ensure that their scope is within the certificate that they have been provided. And also they need to also provide proof that they have been certified. The requirements for conformity assessment bodies as published in the previous document is compliance to South African regulatory requirements, including but not limited to the Medicines and Related Substance Act, proof of training regarding compliance to South African regulatory requirements, certification of the quality management system, as per ISO 17021, which is requirements for conformity certification bodies, compliance to the um, relevant international accreditation forum documents for medical devices, for example, MD9 application of the ISO 17021 in the field of medical device quality management system, and also conformity assessment bodies are required to make available to SAPRA information about the organizational structure, ownership, legal and natural persons exercising control over the conformity assessment body. The way forward is that SAPRA has currently extended the ISO 13485 certificate um, requirement extension to all establishments that have been um, licensed by SAPRA. Conformity assessment bodies are um, urged to submit to SANES for recognition. Once SANES approves the conformity assessment bodies to conduct audits, the conformity assessment body will audit and issue a certificate to the relevant manufacturer distributor who will then submit their license application for establishment 
with the certificate to SAPA, which then SAPA will issue their certificate for um, establishment. It is also very important to note that in order for uh, SAPA and industry to be successful, it's a collaborative um, journey with SAPA, conformity assessment body, industry being licensees in terms of the establishments that have been submitted to SAPA, and also SANAS. And working together, we can ensure that we have compliance within South Africa in terms of all medical devices that are in the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Panisile, um, for a wonderful presentation. I hope that it has um, brought some clarity as well to, to our colleagues on the call. So thank you very much, ma'am. We'll have a time for questions later on for you. Um, thanks. Um, I see the, you know, the chat uh, group as well is also getting very active. So um, Dr. Matibe will still be trying to answer as much as she can. And those that we can answer through the chat, then we'll put them uh, later for the questions and answer a uh, slot. So I'm going to just um, ask um, Lydia to, to start presenting or prepare her presentation. Lydia. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Uh, I'll put up my presentation. I hope we don't take that long because most okay, of the... It was also less than 25 minutes. <laughs> uh, most of the uh, things or issues on my presentation has already been shared with the industry early this year. We look forward to your presentation. Thank you. You may go ahead. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? I hope so. Uh, yes, we can. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm just going to touch on um, license renewal for medical device establishments. Uh, the Medicine and Related Substance Act of 1965 is amended in read in conjunction with the General Regulation of Medical Devices as published uh, in 9 December 2016, provides the regulatory aspect of the medical device, including in vitro diagnostic in South Africa. When we look at section 22 of the act, it describes period of validity and renewal of license. A license issued under this section, section 22C, shall be valid for a prescribed period, but may be renewed on application in the prescribed manner before the prescribed time or such time as determined by the director general or authority as the case may be with a payment of a prescribed fee. Okay, for license renewal application, um, during the application, we expect this from the um, industry to submit the same uh, current application form as in the website. It should be in the PDF, or PDF format, where each page is initialed by the AR, that is an authorized representative and a declaration signed and dated. You need to share both the PDF and Excel spreadsheet, complete all relevant section. There will be a cover letter detailing what is in the submission. The cover letter should also be signed by the AR. For manufacturers and distributors, we need a quality manual. For a wholesaler, a site master file will suffice, although a quality manual will be also accepted for the wholesaler if they do have it. In case of the organization does not have a valid ISO 13485 certificate, a declaration by the AR that the organization has implemented a quality management system aligned to ISO 13485. 
confirmation that is later on, um, as um, can you see that has outlined that there is an extension of uh, not later than the 1st of April 2025. So the applicant need to further confirm that um, a certified copy of the ISO 13485 will be submitted uh, at the 1st of April 2025. So you still have another three years to comply. And then what is required also furthermore, we need the CV of the authorized representative, copy of the current Sapra medical device establishment license that you, uh, you were issued before, proof of payment of annual license retention fees for, for the year 2020, 2021 and 2022, depending when did you get your license, um, your establishment license. Proof of payment of the prescribed license renewal fee as gazetted in the current gazette. Any other supporting document relevant to the application? The license renewal must be submitted at least 90 days prior to the license expiry date. I think earlier this year we did um, indicate that there is a grace period for those licenses uh, that were already expired 90 days and uh, depending on the date that we uh, publish communication to the industry about license renewal. Submit the application to the authority using the following contact details. This is very important so that your uh, application is not lost. mdadmin at sabra.org.za this is a, an email that will provide you with, make sure that everybody, your application is not lost. Everybody in the department is every to, uh, able to access it and review it. Large submissions can be submitted via a secure electronic document transfer, depending on what uh, document transfer do you have. On your email address to this um, email address as described above, you need to state that uh, this is an application for establishment license renewal and where you X, you XX means you will write your company name. So it's very important that you you're heading for the. On your email address is correct so that it can go to the right uh, people for review. So I'm going to start talking about the screening and the review of the license application. Administration, administrative screening. They will verify the following documents are there in your application. The renewal cover letter signed by the AR as I previously explained. The correct license application form in an Excel format and PDF format where the PDF format will be initialed by the AR. The declaration on the application form is signed by the AR. The CV of the AR again. The quality manual or the site master file, as the case may be, as I've already outlined, the quality manual is required for the manufacturer and the distributor, and the wholesaler can uh, submit site master file, but if the wholesaler does have the quality manual, that will be an advantage to them. They don't have to submit the site myself, file. they can only submit the quality manual. Copy of an old or previously issued license should be attached. And then we, the administrative screener will also check if you have uh, paid your retention fees. If an amendment is added to the application, the regulator will request the applicant to resubmit the renewal without an amendment, and the initial application is automatically rejected. If there are any deficiency, a query letter will be shared with the applicant with a timeline to address the query. Once the admin screener is 
um, admin screening is satisfactory, the applicant will receive an acknowledgement letter. Then the application is referred to for technical review. Our technical re review, once the application has passed through admin screening, the technical aspect of the application will be reviewed. Still the same way if the during technical review is discovered that there is an amendment added, the application will be automatically rejected and will request a resubmission without an amendment. Any technical query will be shared with the applicant with a timeline to respond. Once the technical aspect of the application is completed, the application will be tabled at the next internal meeting for approval. License will then be processed and a notification letter will be shared with the applicant with the prescribed fee for issuing the uh, license. Once the prescribed fee is paid by the applicant, your license will be a renewed license will be um, issued to, to you and the current existing license will become invalid. When we look at timeline, the processing of medical device establishment license renewal is approximately six to eight weeks provided there are no uh, queries in between. If everything is um, correctly submitted and evaluation done, no further queries, six to eight weeks is the maximum time for you to receive your license. Submission of all required input uh, document is important to ensure that you minimize the delay on review of the applications. Deficiency noted by the authority need to be addressed within five working days, but it will be written on the query letter or the deficiency letter that is sent to you. If we look at the uh, process mapping, we receive your application of renewal. It goes into admin screening. No query, it, uh, you get an acknowledgement letter. If there is a query, you respond within the timeline that is given to you. You will be allowed to give two attempts for your queries to address the queries. If, if the queries are not addressed appropriately after two attempts, then your application will be rejected. This is to avoid backlog. Application, once you have acknowledgement letter, it goes to uh, technical for review. And then if everything is okay, it goes, it gets tabled at the meeting for approval. Then you get your renewed license. However, if there are any queries during technical, you'll also be given two attempts to address the query. And if you are not able to, we, we're going to uh, reject your application. Then you can start again, um, reapply and go through this process. It is important to uh, note that uh, if you don't understand anything, you are allowed to uh, call rather than having uh, to and fro and ending up losing out because you have done uh, two attempts. And it's imperative to respond to the queries within the prescribed timelines. I think that's all from my side. Thank you. So thank you very much, Lydia, for yeah. the informative um, presentation. I'm sure that the industry is aware now what processes to follow now with regard to the renewal of the establishment uh, license. So thank you very much, ma'am, for that. And um, colleagues as well, thank you very much for the questions that you are sending on the chat. And um, I can see that you're also getting responses from our presenters. Thank you, Dumelo. Thank you, Kenyisela. Thank you, Dr. Matibe. And I'm currently going to just ask Dr. Matibe just you know, to maybe share with us a few remarks remarks rather um, with regards to the renewal of the establishment license that you might have. Ma'am, over to you. 
Dr. Matibe. Sorry, Komosa, I was on the on the chat trying to. Yes, I can respond. see you a bit on the chat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay. Please over to you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Komutsa, and thank you very much uh, to our colleagues uh, from the industry and also for, to the presenters. We really appreciate coming through to try and explain because I see there are more not, uh, questions than sorry, anticipated. So, but it's okay. We appreciate that uh, because it helps us to look at it from a different perspective. And as I'm indicating, some of the colleagues. Um, are busy answering the, the questions on the chat um, as much as possible, so as quick as possible as well. So we're typing as quick as possible so that by this time comes, we have uh, answered as much as possible. So, but um, I think they indicated as with the renewal, we wanted to ensure that we, we explain the process and what is required. Um, we have explained the amendment part, which amendment can be done during the the process of renewals and the ones that cannot be done during the process of renewal. And I see we are getting a lot of the questions um, related to that. So we're trying to answer as much as uh, possible. Um, so I think for my side, um, if there are any questions that maybe Dumelo would like to answer, because some of the questions are closely related, uh, maybe one or two questions that I can just um, think, uh, let me just basically focus on the renewal ones because I indicated that if there are questions on renewal, I would like to have a look at them uh, and then just address one or two of them. So if I can, and then the other ones, we will respond to them as we go because it's, it's they're coming quicker. So we're trying to, uh, to catch up uh, with that and then we'll have an open session um, on the specific topics that we will maybe um, request or two or three um, our, of our colleagues to ask those questions. So I just want to go down a little bit just to see. Um, because I think we have received a lot of questions on the ISO. OK, now my system is stuck. Yeah, I think I've answered the one of the existing amendment and Kanye Sile has answered that one. So I think Komuzo, maybe we can, I can hand back to you because we're really trying to answer a lot of things. So that I thought maybe I can answer, clarify uh, some other things, but it seems as if it's one and has been responded to. So I'll hand over back to you so we don't cause confusion. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. I think the way that then we can do this is that now we can open the call then, you know, uh, uh, open the lines then for questions and answers. I'm just going to ask Dogozo just to enable, you know, the, uh, people on the call, you know, just to also be able to raise their hands and then ask questions, then we can take it from there. Then, yeah, I think oh, right. we will do that. Oh, I th um, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dumelo? I think, uh, oh, I, okay, okay. I, I think you, you, you have outlined it. I was just saying perhaps we, we can just open the line and take five questions and we we'll respond to, to, to the questions. Uh, I'm trying to respond on the side, but uh, more or less related as such. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jimeli. I think, yeah, as Jimeli suggested, colleagues, let's um, have five questions at the first, and then uh, maybe how we can do this. Let's first, you know, give a, a let's ask Jimeli questions, then, you know, based on his presentations or any questions that you might have for Sanas, um, I will give an opportunity that we can ask five questions. The lines are open now. Thank you, Dokozo. And then please raise your hand, then I will be able to call you. And you know, for the so I'll only give an opportunity just for five questions, colleagues. If we don't manage, please we can still send them on the chat. Um, Komuto, maybe if there are no questions, if uh, I think it was uh, Mark and Mia, their questions okay. are quite related to conformity assessment bodies. Uh, maybe I can just phrase that question and I before maybe um, Frangelina can come in. I just want okay. to see their question because as I'm saying, we're trying to respond. I'm not too sure if Dumelo has responded to that one. It was at 10.08 um, because I was also noting the yeah, time. Can you share that with uh, us? There are, yeah, so the question that comes from, um, I'll just combine them. Um, it's from Mark, how long? will the accreditation of CAPS take and why not rather apply the reliance and recognition approach for acceptance of international CAPS and notifying bodies? 
and then ESAPRA recognizing international caps. So I grouped them together and I think afterwards, because I saw there were no hands, so that's why I thought maybe I can bring these questions and then I'll hand over back to, to the floor to you to take over the hands. So maybe okay. Dumelo can assist with those and then I think uh, Homozo can go back to your proceedings. Thank okay. you. I, I've answered the, the one of foreign uh, CAB, okay? And then there was a follow-up question. I was still going through that. I think the important one is that uh, when you combine with the issue of uh, recognition and reliance uh, process as, as a guideline from the World Health um, Organization as, as such. You know, the, the, the recommendation itself as a state from the World Health Organization, it is in cognizance of the developing countries as, as such, and mostly those that do not have a quality infrastructure because the very same recommendation that you find that it will not be applicable in, in other countries that we have because they have be informed by the, the country regulatory framework. And over and above that, within the guideline or the framework itself, it gives uh, what needs to be done uh, depending on the approach that you take. You need to be familiar with the legislation of that country that you are relying on. You need to know what are they doing there. That brings an administrative burden when we have our own system that has been funded by the public purse to actually conduct that particular part. So as we are alive to that, with regard to ISO quality management system, it, it, it's not reliance. But to the extent where you go into the dossier, where the risk assessment, the development and exporting and that, that need to come from, there is some element of, of reliance on that because the notification body will have worked in there. As per my response that, that the notification body are established based on the European legal framework, legislative framework, and those notification bodies, you cannot be a notification body if you are not a conformity assessment body established in the European. You know, so because it would be impossible for for European country to be able to exercise an oversight as a competent authority or designated authority responsible for that notification board, if that notification board is sitting anywhere else in the world that they don't have access. That's exactly what we are saying at South Africa, based on our legislative and SAPRA, that if you are conformity assessment body operating in a conformity in a regulator space, we need to know who you are where you are and what is that you are doing and you must be accountable for to to sub because ultimately regulator is a final arbiter and final uh, accountable authority of what is happening within their sector in terms of what they're controlling that's that's what we are saying thank you uh, as far as that is concerned and you can take the question as I, I'm reading through and the, the process. How long does it take for a um, certification body to take? Six months, 12 months, 24 months, you know, because the ISO 17021 need to, to be implemented. The mandatory document need to be fulfilled and it depends on how long and how uh, competent for lack of better way, technical competent within the, the space of conformity assessment is that certification body is is, uh, uh, is. and how long do they address the non-conformance that are, are raised uh, during the assessment and evaluation and, and so forth and, and putting those particular process in, in place. So if it is a well established familiar with this six months, they should make it uh, 12 months and others then go to 12 months. There is then a cut off after 12 months then you need to start from scratch because it will have been a long time that has lapsed since we have looked at the document review and done the site um, assessment as, as such. I have answered the acceptance of the foreign uh, 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 certification of uh, answered reliance on, on that. And there's a question again on, uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry if I'll be a jumping because there's quite a lot of question, I think, directed to me. There's also a point of um, supplier declaration of conformity, okay? The supplier declaration of conformity, it is based on the risk assessment approach that you need to be determined. And when we're determining on it, to determine the risk. Normally you'll allow the self-declaration on the lower risk category product where you rely on what manufacturers uh, uh, tells that the product is safe, is performance, so forth, and, and that. But that particular system, again, once again, it does not suffice for South Africa. Why? 
when you look at the South African legislation in terms of the product safety, you know, we our 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 product safety legislation regime it is not as robust as the as, as the European one. That's number one. Number two, self declaration relies on an effective market surveillance that the, 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 the regulatory authority, competent authority have the structures in place to make sure that they implement a robust market surveillance where they'll be able to identify a product that does not fulfill the quality requirement. So that's number two, that does not assist us with second um, self-declaration. Second, it did require a, a, a strong product recall laws that must be within the regulation and within the laws of, of the country. That create another problem for us in South Africa in terms of a legislative framework. And secondly, there need to be strong substantial uh, penalties, uh, sanctions that will be able to, 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 to be sanctioned on those that provide misleading declaration as far as that is concerned. And fourthly or fifthly is that there need to be a customer education. The level of education in the country and access to the information and all those kind of things, the impact on the self-declaration. So we cannot cherry pick system that are established in the well-developed countries and we want to adopt them as such without understanding our conditions here in the country. If now you go to Switzerland and you're using the Trump or use the bus, the assumption is that you have paid. The card that you are using to tap, it has money and you go in. No one is checking your card. But you cannot go and adopt that system of public transport and come and implement in South Africa. It's not going to work because we need to ensure that you have paid and then you must be paid before you use the service. So we, we, we are alive to such level of development and so forth. And lastly, the appropriate regulatory environment and the speed with which the administrative justice will take place. Our court are busy with corruptions, are busy with political parties fighting, not administering the enforcement of the legislation. So now if you find a particular manufacturer having put a misleading declaration based on the self-declaration, how are we going to enforce that particular product? How are we going to retract and recall such product from the market on the self-declaration? That created a problem within the South African legislation and at our level of development as far as those aspirations are concerned. Therefore, we're not in support of the self-declaration. The declaration, it is based on the commitment that the manufacturer, uh, importer, take full responsibility of the product that they put in place. So when in the case that we have an advert event, that we're able to take them account to the court as slow as they will take, as far as that's concerned. We can recall a number of cases that are to deal with the customer safety and product safety that are in the court that are not being. A simple one is theosis. No one has been accountable for what has happened there. So that declaration will create a further problem for us as such. So to prevent that, we don't allow that, but we don't recommend to, to take that approach. I hope I did not. Yeah, uh, you can assist me with other questions. Thank you, Dumel. I think there was a question from Frangelina. Frangelina, you had your hand raised at some stage. Um, I, I think Dumel covered all the questions that I had. Thanks. That you had. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. Um, Dr. Dimagatsu, any further questions for Dumelo before we release it? I think there is a, to, to me, to me, there is this yes. one asked by Caroline Scott. It's, it's, a, it's a very important point to me. It, it touches me, the startups, you know. Okay. Uh, okay. The, 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 the conformity assessment, I will not come here and say it is not expensive. It is very expensive and it is not helpful for the small medium enterprise in particular the startups, because one need to do everything. And I've been advocating this within the DTI, within the organization, that there need to be some mechanism where the small and medium enterprises depend on their revenue and turnover, how they can be assisted with this. The small enterprise development agencies see that a run number of things to assist based on the sectors that they focus on. And at the time, uh, my late boss, uh, at least they had access to the DTI, there was this manufacturing competitiveness enhancement that will assist, but I, I, I'm still fighting for that, that the small medium enterprises, because that's where the job will be created to find a, man, a manner in which that they can be assisted on the implementation. But from our part is that through the CEDA, is that there's normally free trainings that are provided for those that up. I think um, that person, Caroline, can get hold of me. 
I'll then give a contact of an individual at small enterprise development to see what can then be done as far as assisting with the conformity assessment issues for, for the startups. Thank you, Dumelo. Much appreciated. Um, I think if there are no further questions for Dumelo, um, I'm going to now give the platform for questions uh, to Kanisile and Lydia. Any hands or questions for Kanisile? Based on her presentation. Um, Komuto, unless there is a hands raised, I see Kanisile has uh, responded to uh, while we were talking with Dumela as well. Um, yeah, if there are hands, then there is, can be raised. Is yeah. Thanks. Uh, there is a hand. Uh, Nora, please ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Nora. Go okay, ahead, this 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 question is actually for Lydia. Is it for um, Lydia? We wanted to know with regard with regards to the renewal fees. Usually, Sapra will issue out invoices and then we'll pay the invoices, but we haven't received invoices for this year yet. Can we make the payments and just provide proof of uh, payments for for the renewals? Uh, yes. Actually, retention. Sorry. Company. Yeah. 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 That. Sorry. Sorry, Nora. You saying for the retention fees or for the renewal? Maybe let me get because you mentioned retention. Now, do you want retention. Me? Retention. So, sorry. So you haven't received. Okay. So you haven't received any um, invoices. Invoices. Okay. So maybe mm -hmm. if we can forward it to um, I think it's Chatel and copy um, us on that communication, and then they will assist you. You, you should you. tell from finance, or you can just forward it to, to us and then we'll forward it to finance on your behalf. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Dr. Matiba. Nora, is that all from your side, ma'am? Okay, um, any further questions? Yeah, Colleagues? There's a, there's a question from, from, from Maureen. I, I don't understand the question talking about the testing and all that. It says that uh, as a quality manager, I can approve contract testing laboratory myself for critical quantification test of IVD. And I do that the same with distributors who work for me. And the distributors are regulated independently by SAPRA, but not laboratories. What is the reason? Um, well, I think maybe now, I can my, my understanding. You and yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe let me clarify. I've answered um oh, the oh, answered. so okay. the yes, because the question is that she's um accrediting or reviewing the lies the um, labs that they are using in the organization. So I've indicated that your ISO 13485 will cover that because when they are doing ISO 13485, they look at your service providers. And it's your responsibility as an organization to ensure that the extension of your supply chain is also covered. And that is covered under ISO 13485 as a requirement. So what they were saying is that if I'm an organization and I want to use Lab X, that Lab X, why is SAPRA not auditing it? So my, my answer was that that Lab X is extension of your own organization's um, activity. So it will be covered in your ISO 13485. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, there is a hand from Bajnath Sharika. May you please go ahead and ask your question? Thank you. Um, just staying on the topic of the retention fees, I know uh, uh, Dr. Matibe mentioned that um, there's, there would be an invoice issued. Um, I remember last year, SAPRA issued out a letter with uh, stating that uh, the retention fees, the the purpose and the uh, confirming the account details. Would it be possible to get that letter a little bit earlier in the year? Um, I asked the question because a lot of a lot of companies can't process uh, payments based on a guideline. And um, if we don't get the invoice in time, that letter is actually quite helpful for us. Um, I don't know if that's if that's a possibility, um, Dr. Matibe. Um, 
Thank you. Okay, we, I think it's on the website, but I'll confirm it. Yes, we'll do that. Just taking. Thank you. Stuff. I think last year we got it a bit. We got it. I think it was four days before the deadline. If we could just get it a little bit earlier, it would really help the industry and I know myself as well to uh, make sure that our retention fees are paid on time. Thank you. OK, we'll do that. Ours was supporting finance um, with that yes. letter from the unit. Yeah, yes, because we we try to manage the communication is that uh, we allow finance to start with it. And then from our unit, we're just supporting finance, just as a reminder. But we will keep in, um, I will, I'll speak to finance that we just uh, allow them a month of sending invoices because they have to send it now in April, beginning of financial year, it's now. And then okay. maybe end of April, then we can just send that reminder. Awesome. Just to Thank assist, you. as you indicated. Thank you. Thank you very much. And tell me, who is the contact in finance again? You mentioned someone. Is it Chantel? Yes, would we would would we would you be able would we be able to share the details with us? OK, we, we can thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. I put it on. I will put it on the feedback of uh, the the workshop because when we post in the presentation, we can also include their their details as well. OK, great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Um, are there any more questions? Okay, um, Dr. Mativi, any maybe um, closing remarks? I think that maybe it looks like the colleagues are covered or they've, they've posted as many questions on the chat as possible. Maybe we can prepare a closure um, remarks a bit before. I think that somebody's got a hand up. Just a second. Yes. Is it Herman or Hartman? Fleur. It's Fleur Hartman, yes. Could I please just ask a question which I typed and it doesn't seem, I don't know, you don't seem to be seeing it. Okay. Uh, just, I just need to know, I, I have, my concern is about wholesale distributors uh, and what the plan is if, uh, ahead with their wholesale distributors because at present they are licensed uh, in compliance with GDP or your good wholesale distribution uh, regulations um, guidelines. I trust you're not going to expect them to comply with ISO 13485 because I believe it will have a devastating effect on the distribution of medical devices in South Africa. You know that they even distribute um, injections, which are sterile and measurable. Um, so, I mean, those are not, not the only, but there are certain medical devices that are distributed by wholesalers themselves. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome on TV. I think that response. was more. Of a, thank you very much, Prince. I think that was more of a statement and a concern than a question. So, but um, I think we the ISO one three point five the requirements is more, we are requiring the distributors and the importers um, of the of the medical device IVDs as well as the manufacturers that we are requiring ISO one three four eight five, and for the wholesaler we want them to have a quality management system in place. So that that one is what we have indicated in our communication. Thank you. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Noted. Uh, I've got a question from Carol. I hope I've pronounced it correctly. Is it Carol? That's correct. Okay, um, please go ahead, ma'am. Uh, revisit the rejection of applications for renewal where an amendment is involved. Because I don't understand if you um, if you have a license and then you apply for amendment like a, an addition of an additional class, um, how can your application for renewal be rejected? Can you please just explain that? Especially if your um, if your amendment has been approved, 
your amendment to your license has been approved. Um, Ma'am, we haven't rejected any renewals. We all the renewals. I, I I'm fully aware how many renewals we have received to date. Mm -hmm. We have not rejected any renewals, not at all. I haven't signed any re rejection for renewals at all, so I'm not too sure. Maybe no, uh, it's it was if you can explain. Sorry, maybe in the presentation. In the, oh, in the presentation, because I thought you were. Excuse no, me. no, not about personal issues. No, um, in the oh, presentation, okay. it sounded like if you there was an amendment to your license, that your application for renewal will be rejected. So I just want a little clarity on that. Is it a um, an amendment that has not been approved or an? You know, if you have a license and then you have amendments to that license and then when you apply for renewal of your license, how does the amendments affect that license um, application for renewal? Um, can I come in? We yeah. were saying a renewal should be submitted on its own without an additional of amendment. If you look at the process of a renewal, an amendment, nobody will reject an amendment. Okay? If you we want a renewal to be submitted on its own so that the process can go uh, faster. And if you add an amendment at screening, um, they'll pick it up. They won't reject it. It, it, it. They will ask for you to resubmit, but the, the initial um, submission is like automatically being rejected. Not that we are rejecting your uh, amendment. You are allowed to, to make an amendment. We just won't need you to submit a renewal without an amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Carol, was your question answered, ma'am? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. I think okay. what I'd do is I'd submit everything. Okay. <laughs> the original right. certificate as well. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, Fleur, I see you still have your hand up. Is that uh, the old one? So I would like to call somebody else now. Maybe I just take it down, please. I'm or trying to drag have... it down. I'm trying to drag it down, but it's not going down. Okay, where is it? <laughs> yeah, okay. well, I'm putting my. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. ask our technical to assist you with that. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, Lisa, can you? Um, you may ask your question, ma'am. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? It's loud and clear. Okay, so just <laughs> um, to the previous point that was made. <laughs> So that means the organization has to, if they want to do an amendment in the same year that the renewal has to be done, they obviously have to make separate pay payments because an amendment requires a payment and a renewal requires a payment as well. Since you cannot do an amendment when you are doing a renewal at the same time. Thanks, Lisa, for your question. Uh, Lydia, you want to take that? Um, yes, you are correct. A renewal needs a, a payment and an amendment needs a payment. So you need to pay for both amendment and the renewal. When you do an amendment, there is an amendment fee. And when we do a renewal, there is a, a renewal fee. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You got your answer there, Lisa. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, any further questions? Any other comments? Uh, Malcolm, then followed by uh, Hanley. Mal Malcolm? Hi there. Um, just with regards to the amendments, <clears throat> I would like to know exactly what constitutes an amendment because um, I can imagine if you are adding a class of device that's higher than what you had on the original license, that um, 
that SARPA would consider that an amendment. However, what about a license that removes product only from a uh, license renewal? Would that be considered an amendment? Can I answer that question? Please, can see. Okay, so an amendment will be whereby you are changing a license, the details of the license holder, you are changing an AR, you are changing your personnel, be it the person responsible for manufacture, import and export, the person responsible for quality control, or you are um, removing a class whereby you previously had class C on your previous license and now you no longer want that class C on your license, or if you are adding a class that you were previously not licensed for, whereby you are licensed for only class B and C, and now you've added products that are class D. Those are what we call amendments, whereby you are adding a class that you are already licensed for. You are adding a class A a product, you already have class A products on your license. That is a notification. So that okay. won't be seen as an amendment. All right, so so just to, from my question, you, you mentioned that a room, if I removed a class of product that would be considered an amendment, is that correct? Yes, because now you are changing things, okay. yes. So, okay. Okay, that, that, that's clear. I think question 3.7a in the uh, questions and answers document for license renewal isn't incredibly clear with regards to that. So maybe if we can just add that note, just make it a little bit clearer that if any uh, product change happens or class of product is amended on the license that 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 requires then amendment. It, it's I was reading it and that's why I'm asking the question. It wasn't very clear to me, but thanks, Kanyesila. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We'll definitely amend the document. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Malcolm, on that. Um, yeah, we can also be able to go back and improve on uh, how we answer all the questions. Thanks. Um, Henley, um, over to you. I just wanted to know uh, if you do an amendment, um, do you still pay retention fees? Does, does an amendment um, replace a, repl a, a retention fee or not? Um, I will also come into this one. Uh, and we know oh, it doesn't. Yes, because your remember, retention fee is with regards to the original issue date of your license. And that's what it looks at. It doesn't look at the amendment date. Thank you. Uh, can I just Thanks. ask, what about a renewal? Who's, who's talking now? Is there another uh, question except Hanley? Or Lisa, Lisa, is that you? Yeah, okay. it's me again. Please, uh, I just all wanted right. to know, with regards to the renewal, um, if you're doing a renewal, do you Um, you are breaking, Lisa. We can't hear you. Pay your retention. The previous question was regards to an amendment. If whether you need to pay for the new uh, renewal of a license, an amendment. Okay. Yeah, your your line is terrible. We hear you partially. Then you know. Then you break away again. Can you maybe t uh, t try Sorry. to type your question? I, I think what she's meaning is that if you uh, do a um, renewal of a license, um, does that, um, do you have to pay retention fee as well? Oh, okay. Uh, can you see that? Uh, the answer is yes, unless there's any other further communication from the regulator. But if you look at the the regulations that is published, you have to pay your retention fees annually. So at the current moment, if I can put it, we are also discussing this with finance, but at the current moment, what is published still remains. So we are currently discussing with finance and legal on, on the part of renewals and um, retention fee, but at the moment, yes, we pay. And if there's any change to what is published, then it will be communicated to the industry. And um, yeah, and any, 
any outcome based on that will be acted upon accordingly. Thanks. But at the moment, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Makaso. Hanli, I hope and, and Lisa, I hope you answered. Um, any further questions from your side, Hanli? Um, otherwise, maybe please drop your hand. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, any further questions? I would just like to give Dr. Matibe just uh, an opportunity to close this meeting. Oh, okay. Before that, um, Alice. Alice, then Lien. Alice, go on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Hi. yes. So to get it um, with regards to the last question, so we will be paying an amendment fee, a retention fee, as well as a renewal fee. Yes, if you're doing an amendment when you're doing a renewal, yes. So, so it will be the uh, amendment fee and then the renewal will be um, the license fee as well as a retention fee. Is that correct? Yes. Dr. Mativi, I did not hear your answer there. Oh, I'm on, I'm on, oh, was I on mute? Oh, okay, I apologize. No, you're that. just um, soft. We could not, it's like you've moved away from your mic. Oh, okay, I apologize for that. Uh, the answer okay. is yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, thank you. Hear you now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alice. Uh, Lien? Well, um, the question while we're talking about fees, um, each time we do an amendment um, and also for renewal, we also have to pay an additional fee for the certificate. So if we're going to do a, um, an amendment, say, say in September and then a renewal in October, do we have to pay that uh, 3900 uh, for the certificate both times? Because we don't really need the both certificates within such a short time frame. Um, Gateko, may you please uh, mute? You are disturbing the call. Gateko, thank you very much. Um, Lien, sorry about that. We could not hear you because the, we are just getting echoes. Can you please just repeat your question, ma'am? Yes, sorry about I that. Said, um, just while we're talking about fees, my question was that um, if we apply doing a renewal, and then straight afterwards, a um, sorry, an amendment. And then straight afterwards, a month or so afterwards, we're doing a renewal. Do we have to pay that three thousand nine hundred for the certificate, for the amendment, and then a month later for the um, renewal, or can we just wait to get one certificate after the re renewal? Thanks for uh, yes. The question is yes, because the activities would have been done for the amendment, and then. Um, we release your license because we would have completed it and send it to the CEO to sign your amendment. Okay, thank you. I hope that was clear for you, Lien. Um, um, I'm sorry, I, um, it wasn't. So do we have to pay the, the certificate fee to us? Uh, because your amendment came in September. Then we finalize your amendment. If everything is okay with your amendment, we release it and we, we 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 send it out for signature. And for us to issue you that license, you have to pay for for the license that we'll be issuing to you. So okay. the answer Thanks was yes. Thanks very much. Thanks for the clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lien. Okay, I'm going to ask uh, Sabelo. Sabelo, your question, please. Okay. Yes, just want to confirm if it is possible to do a renewal while the amendment is still ongoing, or do we have to wait for an amendment to be approved, the certificate being issued, then we do the, the, the renewal. Uh, I'm not too sure I heard uh, Sabelo correctly because I think there were some words swallowed, but uh, maybe before I make an assumption, maybe Sabelo can please repeat himself. Sabelo, please repeat your question, sir. Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, Hello? we can. 
Yes. I just want to confirm if it's possible to do a renewal while there is an amendment that's still ongoing that is pending approval, or do you have to wait for an amendment to be finalized, uh, the certificate be issued, then we can do a, a, a renewal. Thank you. So I think I will answer on the renewal. We have we indicated at least 90 working days before the expiry. So I think as an organization now, you still need to start working on your on your renewal. And as we have indicated, and what the reason why we made that amendment, put it forward to say, please do amendment, is that we recognize and realize that uh, what we have seen is that the organization are currently, for example, they don't use in the same AR at the current moment, and they are only waiting for to 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 change their AR at renewal, and that is not not compliant to the to the to the requirements. Because if you change your AR, you need to notify us. So we have in, in some of the investigation that we are doing uh, that we have uh, received a lot of complaints as well as where we are doing as indicated uh, investigation with RC. Most companies have the their um. What you call this? Their organization have um, example like I gave is an RC. I mean an AR. Sorry, that has not changed, and they are waiting for renewal to change it. So that's not compliant. So hence we are calling for that. That you must ensure that if there is an amendment that is done on your license, the person that is supposed to be an AR is an AR by the time of renewal. So you cannot run without an AR for the time period, and when it's time for renewal, you only change then. So that's the reason we say you have to make sure that. Your your license is as the par current situation that is in your in your business. If you're changing your AR on the day that you are want to 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 do a renewal, it has to. We'll we'll ask you questions on that to confirm that all this time the same AR was not the person that you changed. So let me put it that way. But we are trying to avoid that companies are running with changes that are not sent through to us because. They want to ensure that they do renewal. They are currently bringing product. We have one case where the product is brought in the country, but it's not in their listing. So that's how we pick up some of these issues. So if you want to bring a class of product that was not, and it was stopped, if it was not stopped, we would have not. So we are also requesting the industry to ensure that they comply. And these are the some of the things that we are putting ahead to ensure that there is compliance in place from our side so hence we are asking that please ensure that you do your amendment as current situation in your organization because we are picking up those questions from our regulatory compliance where we're going and check we find that this organization has not updated their license accordingly and they're indicating when we have meetings with them they're indicating now we were waiting for renewal but then you're operating uh, you're not complying because you're bringing product that you're not supposed to bring because you're waiting for you for your for, for your organization to do a renewal. So I, I can see there's questions around that area. It's because of what we have seen coming and we're trying to succumb that as much as possible. And as I indicated, we have a room to come and talk. We negotiate, we not negotiate, we communicate and we establish why didn't you do your amendment prior? But our our current state is that you have to do your amendment. You cannot use your renewal to do your amendment. Because how are you operating without an AR? How are you bringing the product into the country that you don't have a class for on your license? Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Thank you, Komoto. Sabel, I hope you were answered, sir. Um, are you covered, Sabelo? Yes, thank you so much. Yes, come on. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Mark, uh, can you please just uh, share your question with us as well? Uh, thank you. I want to just rephrase a question that was asked earlier because I'm not sure that we got the correct answer. Um, do does an does a license holder have to pay a renewal fee and a retention fee? in the same year. Yeah, I think maybe Mark, I was, um, I've indicated that we are currently internally discussing this with our finance and legal, but we have to comply to the current regulation as it stands. So the answer is yes, it has to be paid. And based on our discussion, if 
internally we we view it uh, or that the team views differently, then that will be communicated. So I don't want to preempt and say if this happened, this will happen. If this will happen, so we, it has to be paid as per regulations now, annual annual uh, retention fees, and then the renewal will be paid. And if there is something different, then that will be communicated, as I stated. And we are currently discussing that between legal and finance. And it's not only the medical device unit, it's all other unit within, I mean, in all the health products related. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Matibe. Thanks, Mark, for the question. Um, I've got uh, Tarwa on the line as well. Tarwa, see you've got your hand up. You may go ahead and ask your question. Hi there, guys. I would just like to confirm there's a question in the chat regarding to wholesalers. Do or do they not require the ISO 13.5 certification? I think I have responded in one of the answers. Uh, we indicated they have to have a quality system in place, whether it's GDP, G, I mean GWP or ISO 9000, but they have must have a quality management system to be able to manage the product for the wholesalers. Cool. So, so not 13.5 specifically. specifically. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I hope I've. Uh, I hope I'm audible because I'm not no, too sure if Tara could Tara, hear. You hear. Yes, you answer. are. Thank you. OK, OK, um, colleagues, um, I'm just going to take the last two questions so that we can close the meeting. Any further questions? OK, um, Dr. Matibe, over to you just, you know, to give us a closing remark and so that we can yeah, uh, finish off for today. Thanks, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank our colleagues from Sana Stumelo. Thank you very much for making time to support us on this so that we are able to communicate to the applicant uh, regarding the requirements. Really appreciate that uh, taking time. And thanks to my colleagues, uh, Kanisil and Lydia, as well as yourself, Komozo, for, um, for, for, for managing the, the process for us. Really appreciate it. And I would like to further thank the industry, um, the applicant uh, to, I would say industry because it's not everyone who's an applicant on the call, to say thank you very much, guys, for engaging and also attending this. And we really appreciate all the questions because what we will do is we go back and especially the ones that are on the chat and the recording, we'll go back and have a look at, um, you know, the, our systems and try and improve on the, on the processes that we have put in place to ensure that there's compliance from, um, from, our, from our applicant, um, I'm receiving a lot of children, so it's kind of disturbing me. Let me put my phone because when, when the messages are coming out, also um, coming on my phone. So I just want to say thank you guys, and we are receiving all these questions and comments um, openly so to, to ensure that we improve on our processes as a regulator and also relook at our processes and go back and look at our guidelines, look, look back at our regulations as well as look at the act and but at the end of the day we have to ensure that we comply to the act we comply to our legislative framework we comply to our regulations but in, in a sense uh, thank you very much for for your input your, your 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 feedback and your your questions that has been asked and on the on the on the, on the various platforms whether live uh, questions that were asked directly as well as on the chat so with that being said, uh, I just want to say thank you again, and we will continue engaging with the industry on, on various topics in, in various platforms. So some of the platforms will be not uh, being initiated by SAPRA, but we will, um, in any platform that we have to come and clarify some of the issues, we'll also be uh, on our availability, we'll try and make sure we are available. We'll definitely cry and come in and address it, because I saw some of the questions were not related to this workshop. And if there's another platform that we have to come in and, uh, and assist um, in clarifying uh, our where we are coming from, um, it will really assist. Uh, we will really engage on that. So with that said, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. I would like to hand um, back to you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Matibe, for, um, for the kind words and as well for also, you know, um, 
uh, this engagement with the industry. And thank you once again as well to our presenters. Thank you, Dumelo, for availing yourself. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Kanisile. And also thank you uh, yourself, uh, Dr. Matibe, as well, and the team. And um, most thanks, you know, to, to the you know, industry, you know, members, you know, for availing yourselves and making this time so that we can, as SAPRA can also see how we can assist and also improve. And then, you know, this engagement is really very important for us. So thank you very much. And we just like to wish you a, you know, a safe and a blessed, you know, Easter for those who are, who are Christians and also, you know, a wonderful break, you know, for all the other people as well. So have a wonderful break. And goodbye for now. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks and bye bye, everyone.